Anne Pia is an Italian Scot, an author and poet. Language of My Choosing was her first book, a memoir, in 2017. And Transitory, her first poetry collection, was published in 2018. I met Anne initially in Edinburgh at Heretics events, and I was moved to read this, her third book, Keeping Away the Spiders. It was such a positive, exciting and thought-provoking book. There are so many different reflections in it, thematically arranged, subjects such as sexuality, education, camping, gender identity, and it sounds like Anne has had at least ten lives, not just the one. And I wanted to talk to Anne about the book and ask her some questions because it is one of these books that leaves you brimming over with thoughts, really top full of emotions and ideas, and Anne agreed and also let me film our meeting. We met at the Cranny community venue in Edinburgh and it was during December 2020, very shortly after the book was released, when lockdown restrictions allowed for such one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, is it, yeah, is it, is it still um, a pleasure for you? Is it still f flowing? Is it, um, it's not flowing, no, you... it never flows, okay. Peter. Um, it did in the out, you know, when I started, and I that was that kind of outpouring that then went on, oh, for about a year and a half, maybe a year, two years, something like that, and um, it now, it's only when something really grabs me, you know, like I've just had a, an event with Mary Queen of Scots, you know, <laughs> um, so, uh, and I wrote five poems, and there's a potential for more there, mm -hmm. I think, um, Northwards now published them, and that, that was just um, the start of lockdown, actually. So it, it comes in spurts, uh -huh. um, and the way I've worked the past few years, I suppose, is to research something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and become thoroughly familiar, and then maybe that leads to poetry. Um, so that's that's the way it is just now. So I have very, very many fallow months, and actually I'm a member of a writing group, of the mm. others' writing group, but I haven't been a lot because uh, you've got to take a poem, and I don't have okay. a poem, you know. Right. So it's that's it. Um, but um, it's the other thing I think is that sometimes a, a line will will occur to me. Um, and then I can start writing from that first line um, and something came to the other day so there's something something working on me I think but I don't, I don't I'm not the kind of person that I've no routine I don't get up every morning and mm -hmm. and, and write and then turn that into poems I don't have that discipline does reading inspire it reading other poets do you read do you read yeah I do read I, do, I, do, I don't read a lot of poetry mm -hmm. but I do read poetry mm -hmm. I've been reading Rebecca Solnit just now mm -hmm. um uh, yeah, I do. I do read. Um, I've been reading a lot of Norman McKeag. Actually, I read a lot of Norman McKeag mm -hmm. in the summer. I love that poetry. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I took that away with me when we went to Sky. But, uh, um, I'm not an assiduous reader. I read. I become obsessed, and I read, and I can't stop for weeks, and then I leave it, and I don't read at all. And I find that if I'm writing, I can't read. If I read, I can't write. What are you finding in McKeag that? Oh, so of that crowd, it's wonderful it, poetry. Really, yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's very. I, I, can, I think you need to personal. be a poet to get, almost to get it. I, I think I feel. Uh, it's so exposing of them. I think, mm -hmm. and I think there's a there's a tenderness, a kind of Scottish tenderness okay. about him. You know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. when he writes about um, ascent and mm -hmm. all of that, the fisherman and. There's a, there's an, he, he manages to evoke an intimacy, I think, often in his, in his words. Well, there is more formal, I suppose, than much of the poetry we read mm -hmm. today, but um, I love his stuff, yeah. I hear, you know, being 
connected with a lot of his contemporaries like John and Dolly and, mm. and, and others, you hear quite a few McCaig stories, mm. but they usually end with McCaig making some sort of withering or unpleasant comment about somebody, or even worse. They were all a bit like that, weren't they? I mean, they were Dermot and... Yeah. Uh, so you'd probably be consider yourself quite fortunate to be writing now and not well, 30 I think years that's ago, because <laughs> exactly. otherwise you'd have probably just really been come relegated come to it. There's a freedom to yes. be diverse now, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. there's a freedom to be, I think, uh, I don't know if it's come with uh, maturity with me or what, but um, maybe it is a feature of age, but um, that sense of just being very happy to be who you are mm -hmm. and not to have to be approved of or uh -huh. hide things, or I think is wonderful. Um, and I think it's maybe part of the world we live in now, I think that's right. I mean, young mm -hmm. people are very, very open about everything in their mm -hmm. lives, I think, you know. Um, and my daughter puts up stuff, uh, my second daughter, you know, about mental health on Facebook every day. To my chagrin, I keep mm -hmm. saying, what's wrong? You're not well, is everything all right? You know, um, very open about feeling anxious and all of that. So I think, I think the whole thing, I think it's good to be able to, to not hide who you are. And I think having come from a, a time when we had to, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, sexuality or whatever, uh, or relationships, mm -hmm. you know, that we can do that now. That's not to say that, I mean, it's not a contradiction in terms of identity, um, because it, I mean, as I, I you know, I, I think that we can be, as flu we can be fluid in all sorts of ways, mm -hmm. actually, gender fluid, se mm -hmm. you know, sexually fluid, whatever, whatever we choose, we can we can be that. That's what mm -hmm. we want. We can do that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I don't see the two as a contradiction. You know, I'm not saying that you implied that, Peter. I'm no, saying, no. Know. Yeah, there's. Um, I don't know if it was Isaiah Berlin who makes us always bashing on about there's freedom to and there's freedom from. Yes. And they they're actually pulling in different directions. Yes. And so being free isn't, you know, the be all and end all. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a balance as well. That's true. Um, as long as we don't s settle for settle them. Yes, as long as you're always moving. That's right. Uh, I uh, think uh, that's uh, the uh, thing. Uh, that's um, journey. stood out for me is the one on miracles mm. about your daughter. Yeah. That's the in fact everything seems to anchor around it in a way. And it's um, it ends with you you show her the piece of writing and she says you're both survivors. Yeah. And that's when I can stop and put it down and thought, gosh, what you know, what, what are you saying? What's that what when she says you're both survivors, then you, she means more than you've survived this experience. I don't know if she does. I mean, the way I, I definitely, it's just, I, what happened was I, I let her see the piece, you know, because I didn't want to publish it without her being happy. Um, and she said that she read it on the top deck of a bus and immediately just started to cry. And, and then she said to me, uh, wrote to me and said, it's, it's, I love it, it's brilliant, it's fine mum, and I realised we're both survivors. I think, you know, we suffered a lot jointly in that experience. That was a 14 year experience and it doesn't stop, you know, but you begin to adapt to it. You know, she's badly physically disabled, you know, which is a shame really, because she's so beautiful. It's very hard for her, I think, you know. Um, and. You know, I hate to say this, but actually, I think for a girl, it's always harder somehow. I mean, maybe not, maybe not so much nowadays, but um, you know, she had hard times at school, very hurtful times, and there was a lot of pain involved. And oh, there were about ten operations, and she was always laid down, laid low, had to learn to walk again. And um, there were five or six hour operations, you know. This, mm -hmm. I learned to clean wounds and you know all that and I'm not a nurse so <laughs> I'm completely ham-handed at all of these things um, and we did I feel we did that journey 
together. My husband was very, very supportive, obviously, but he handled it differently, I think. Oh. You know, and it pol in a way it polarised us too. Um, he, he didn't cope emotionally at all. I think at one point I say he nearly fainted at uh, you know, a diagnosis. You mm -hmm. know, they had to kind of turn the attention away from us to, to him. Um, um, and then the nurses were always good at saying, are you all right? You know, you'd hand her, you'd hand her over at the operating theatre, the door mm -hmm. to the operating theatre, and they'd take her away screaming. You'd have to kind mm -hmm. of say, and smile, say, okay, you're okay, you're okay. All of that, yes, we survived it, you know, we did. But obviously you're marked by it in, uh, in many ways, you know. Um, you, you, yes, the, the point where, you know, brought tears to my own eyes, you you make a very specific description of her when you're making a decision about her amputation, I think. Oh, yeah. And you're projecting into the future and thinking, yeah. well, you're trying to picture her crossing a room in the middle of the night yeah. with, with a lover and, yeah. um, nearby. And, um, yeah, so it, 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 it's really um, striking. Why I, I asked about you surviving is because cause I think you've done more than survive. I think you've conquered in a respect. That's what I thought you were trying to well, suggest there. I don't know if I've conquered, I hope I have, I maybe. But I, don't, I think Camilla has, in many ways, conquered. Um, you know, she's, she's got a, a big job with the BBC. She, you know, um, she did that. She just clawed her way <laughs> in, you know, um, and, and then clawed up, you know. <laughs> Um, but she's been brilliant. She works for Six Radio now. She's assistant commissioner there, which is fantastic, um, and she's well loved. So I think that's I think that's conquering. Yes, you know. Yeah. And is that piece of writing then 